You don't have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to acquire all the knowledge of the top PhDs. All you need is a system. Over my 12 years of combined experience teaching students of all ages and abilities, running a successful academic test prep agency, and publishing peer-reviewed research in value theory, I've discovered a four-step system that will give you the shortcut to PhD-level expertise in any field. And I'm going to show you how to implement this system for yourself, saving you years of your life in the process. Starting with step one, go broad. Ask yourself, how do you usually approach learning a topic? Well, if you're anything like I used to be, you probably open a book or take a course and simply consume the content, take some notes, and maybe even review a bit. But why do you still struggle? Why do you still feel like you didn't quite understand the material at a deep level? Well, that's where what I've called going broad comes in. And if you want to learn how this approach works for everything from learning academic topics to learning sales and entrepreneurship, one of the absolute best books you should read is Range by David Epstein. Going broad has two forms. One, going broad within a topic, and two, going broad across topics. So let's start with number one here. Back when I was starting out my research for what would become my first peer-reviewed academically published book, I did start out reading lots of advanced texts in many subjects having to do with value theory, which was the field I was attempting to learn. But at a certain point, I realized there simply were ideas and theoretical frameworks certain authors were discussing that I had no knowledge of. And so that's when I started to fill in the gaps in my knowledge by reading all the intro books, introductions to ethics, aesthetics, neuroscience, psychology, economics. And I purposely made sure I even sat in on certain classes I wasn't even registered for, all just so I could have the broadest and most holistic view of what I was studying, seeing it from every possible angle. But how can you adopt this approach for yourself without attending school? Well, let's take a look at how I implement this for myself as someone who's been out of school for years now. In the past year, I wanted to learn more about the various histories of different parts of the world, such as China, Latin America, India, Europe, Russia, and the Middle East. Of course, I could pick up a book on, say, some very specific period of Middle Eastern history, such as the period of the so-called Great Game between Britain and Russia, but instead of starting there, I picked out a six-hour documentary on on the history of the Middle East from the 1600s to the 1800s and simply started making it a habit to listen to that instead of music on my headphones while I'm at the gym working out. Now, you might ask me, how could you possibly absorb or retain any information that way? Well, my answer is that one, I do this only during parts of my workout that are either my warm up or during repetitive cardio sessions and not during parts of my workout that actually require my full attention or focus. And two, I set the expectation for myself that I definitely won't absorb all this information on the first try. Instead, here's what I do. And here's where you might think I'm a little bit crazy. Once I'm done listening to this documentary, I simply start listening to it all over again from the beginning. And I might do this as many as three or four times in total. And remember, I'm not taking any extra time to do this because that would have been empty time anyway. And where do you have these types of empty time? On your commute to work? While folding laundry? Well, while I'm listening to this, my goal is to catch pretty much anything I can about essentially what you might think of as the big picture. What empires were there at that time? Who opposed whom and when? And what are some of the major ethnic groups, religious groups, and so on that I need to pay attention to for now? At other times during the week, I'm also reading specific books on this topic, and so whatever I'm reading starts to make more sense within the context of what I've been listening to. And as I listen to the same audio again and again, and I read books that are complementary to it, the more I'm catching new facts and ideas that simply flew past me before. And because it's all connected to some greater narrative in my mind, I no longer have to do what we all dread, memorize facts. But just going broad within a topic isn't enough. We have to also engage in the second type of going broad, namely two, going broad across topics. Let's recall before how I mentioned that while I was researching for my first book, I attended a bunch of classes I wasn't even registered for. Well, that was purposeful. 
Because my field value theory is extremely interdisciplinary by nature, I needed to understand a whole range of topics that the concept of value touched. Neuroscience, philosophy, psychology, economics, anthropology, and so on. And I still use this approach today to learn pretty much anything. You see, I'm not just listening to that six-hour documentary on the Middle East. I have a similar one I listen to on Latin American history, Chinese history, French history, and so on. And the more I understand the general histories of each region, the better I understand the history of each other region. And so, in order to truly master a topic on a PhD level, you absolutely have to learn topics outside of your field. And why? Well, that leads us to step two in this process. Develop a research question and learn research methods. Have you ever read a book, watched a movie, or even simply heard someone tell a story years ago, and you still remember that story years later? Well, the reason is simple. Our brains remember stories better than they remember dry facts. If you want to become a master of a specific topic, the reality is you're going to have to know a lot of specific facts. And so, one way I'm able to retain so many specific facts is because I'm constantly creating narratives. Think about it. The more you go broad, both within a specific topic and among a range of different topics, the more your brain is literally going to create new neural networks of associations. This ensures that each new fact or concept you learn exists not by itself in a vacuum, but within complexes of associations with other concepts, such that when you remember and recall one fact, you're in effect simultaneously making yourself remember and recall multiple related facts. And creating narratives and stories is the best way to achieve this effect. But all narratives have to have a main idea what in PhD curricula are called research questions. And so, as you're going broad in your learning by adopting some of the techniques we've discussed, you should be asking yourself various questions that are of interest to you. In my case, the question that eventually popped into my mind as I started listening to the first documentary I found was, what causes empires to rise and fall? In effect, this key question became my research question. It became the framework through which I started to learn and examine each region's history. And so, when certain facts relating to this question came up in my listening and reading on the topics, I was able to more effectively remember and later recall these facts. Ask yourself, how can you recreate this system for yourself so far? And what are some possible research questions you're interested in exploring? But having a research question then begs another question. What methods should we use to research the question in the first place? Well, for any topic you choose to learn about, you're gonna need to build your critical thinking skills. As a basic foundation, you'll want to learn some basic statistics and valid data collection and study design methods. And one of the best books I've found out there on this is Statistical Analysis, The Basics by Christer Thrain. Actually finding good research sources, though, that can be a bit of a pain, which is why I've partnered with the sponsor of today's video, Consensus.app. Have you ever spent hours googling a topic only to find just one or two reputable research articles on the topic you're learning about? Or have you ever typed a research question into ChatGPT only for it to spit back a bunch of garbage or even made-up sources? I know I have, and it's extremely frustrating and wastes so much time. Consensus is an AI-powered research tool that has made my research and learning process so much faster and easier. Have a research question and want to know how much evidence and what kind of evidence exists for that claim? Consensus scours research databases across the world, and not only does it summarize the evidence for you, but it lists all of the citations and even ranks them by the type of study, whether that's a meta-analysis, an observational study, a randomized controlled trial, and so on. And it even ranks the sources by the reputability of the journal. It can even draft research-based outlines for you containing all relevant citations, organize topic-by-topic -topic tables for you related to your research question, and I absolutely love their research hub where you can upload research papers and compile lists of studies you found related to your topic, all conveniently organized for you in one place. Consensus is giving my audience 40% off for your first three months. Use code PETRO6 at the link in the description to start researching like a PhD. 
Once you've identified your research question and have also complemented that with the learning of specific research methods, you'll need to engage in step three, develop a reading and review system. Now, I already have a video that covers specific routines and patterns of scheduling your learning that you can check out in the video card above. So I'm only gonna add a brief point here about what my weekly learning process is and how it helps me retain both a wide variety and depth of knowledge. Scheduling your reading and practicing time is key, and it doesn't even need to be in discrete, hour-long blocks of time. While I do have blocks of one to two hours of time I schedule to read certain books, I also have 30-minute blocks of time in my calendar I schedule to read two different books at a time, each for even 15 minutes. As I'm sure you've encountered on your learning journey yourself, there are certain books you can grasp and read through quickly, and then there are others you need to read in smaller chunks so you can sit with the concepts more, reflect on them, drill yourself on them, and so forth. So definitely be sure to identify which of these books fit in which category for you and schedule your time accordingly. Crucially, I've also made a habit of scheduling at least an hour every Sunday that I call my review time. This is when I review what I read that week, pour over any notes I took, use ChatGPT to drill me on the concepts, and even pretend as if I'm having a conversation with someone or giving a lecture about the topic, which, as you can imagine, very quickly reveals to me the gaps in my understanding of that topic. And this style of review is exactly what I teach to all my students as well. But if you really wanna learn at the level of a PhD, you can't stop there. You have to apply what you learn, which brings us to step four. Publish something. Now, don't misinterpret me here. Publishing something does not mean you have to write a book or get a Nobel Prize or something, although if that's what you wanna do, go for it. Instead, I mean publish in the most literal sense of this word, meaning to make public. You have to make your knowledge public in some way and open it up to critique and feedback. I mean, think about it. That's exactly what I'm doing and what this channel is all about. I expect you to disagree with me or see things differently or in some way critique me. That's the essence of critical thinking, which is a key ingredient in the learning process. Starting your own YouTube channel simply to discuss what you're learning and researching, regardless of whether it gets views or not, is one way, but there are countless others as well. You could start a blog or a substack. You could start an online discussion group that meets on Zoom at a certain time every week. What's stopping you? Well, it's precisely this that helps PhDs learn so much because they're required to publish something in order to actually receive their PhD. So stop holding yourself back. As the American statesman Albert Hubbard asserted, there is only one way to avoid criticism. Do nothing, say nothing, and be nothing. Don't let that be you. If you want to keep leveling up your critical thinking to make a massive impact not only on your own life, but on the lives of countless others, then be sure to watch this next video.